a delay between that. Hello everyone, welcome to Quilting Affection Tuesday. Um, my name is Tina Diller with Quilting Affection Designs and I'm hoping you're all staying warm today. Today is really windy and cool outside here in Maryland, so I'm hoping you guys are staying warm also inside. Uh, today we're going to have a big episode. We're going to go over some of the um, wonderful half square triangle and hourglass and combination units. We're going to be using it with the Tucker Tremor by Studio 180 Designs. And also, if you stay tuned towards the end of the video, this segment, we're going to do a giveaway announcement for the next, um, to give away next week. And if you have any questions anytime during this post, please comment in the, use the comment section to post your um, comments. If you want to um, leave a comment or just say hi, you're here, whatever, just put it in the comment section. And you'll notice in the description area there is links also to um, different places like Studio 180 Designs, my website, my blog. Go ahead and look at those later after the video and subscribe to my blog or my newsletter and so you can stay in touch with what's going on with studio, um, Quilting Affection Designs. Before we get started with going over a few things, I want to do a little show and tell. I'm going to show you my quilt here behind me. This quilt is called Amazed. It was released in the fall of 2016 in the Isla Petite catalog, and it uses the Drizzle Fabric Collection by Isla Boutiques. This is a 59 by 59 quilt and it uses, it has 12 inch blocks made up of, you can, you'll have um, flying geese, half square triangles, and combination units. In the, in there, and I originally wrote this pattern for block clock ruler, but you can use any type of ruler you want to use. Today I'll show you how to use it with the talker trimmer. Just making the combination units and the half square triangles with this ruler is really nice because it makes your blocks more precise along the way. Um, so today we're going to show you how to do the half square triangles, the combination units, and the hourglass units using this ruler. So let's get started. With the Tucker Trimmer Ruler, there are three sizes. Tucker Trimmer 1, 2, and 3. Tucker Trimmer 1 is a 7 by 7 ruler. It has 11 unit sizes in half inch increments. Tucker 2 is a 6.5 by 6.5 ruler. And it has 10 units that are in quarter inch and to three-fourths inch increments. The Tucker Trimmer 3 is a 13 by 13 ruler, which is a much bigger ruler, and it uses any block size, block or unit size larger than six inches finished. Um, it has 24 unit sizes in half inch increments so it's really nice big huge ruler for doing big blocks. Each of these rulers from Studio 180 comes with a nice step-by-step -step illustrated um, instructions. You'll get a description of how the, the tool basics, a starting square chart size, They'll run you through each how, what size you need to cut for your half square triangles, combination units, hourglass units, just like that. And you have, it'll also show you how to put the units together. 
It also talks about how to put a, um, use the trimmer for left-handed and right-handed quilters. So that's really handy to have and keep these instructions because you're referring to them all the time when using these rulers. You can purchase the rulers at any of your quilt stores or you can just order them from Studio 180 Designs. I put the link description in the um, description area of the post. So let's move over to our um, sewing area and let's get started with making some half square triangles first. To get started, um, we're going to make half square triangles. Well, excuse me, we got a little delay here. We're going to have to shut off a camera. We Something froze. There we go. I got one. Oh. But we'll go ahead and st keep going until the camera is completely up. We're going to make half square triangles. And there we go. We got a nice camera going. Um, so we're going to, first of all, we're going to make half square triangles. With the half square triangles, you're going to need two pieces of fabric. And I'm using a dark and a light in this. Um, some other things you're going to need when working with these rulers is I suggest having your scissors handy, um, your pencils, um, a rotary cutter. I use this size for when I'm making half square triangles, etc. And I use the magic wand and I'm going to show you how to use that in a few seconds. So to get started with the half square triangles, um, we're going to find the diagonal center of our light block and we'll make sure we have it on our reverse side so the right side is down towards your mat. <clears throat> With that diagonal line, we're going to take our magic ruler, magic wand, which is this wand is measures a half an inch wide. And down the center, on exactly on the quarter of an inch of that, is a line engraved. That line is where you're going to put your diagonal center on. So to show you, <clears throat> we'll line it up. With that diagonal line going down the center from that point to that point. And you just can hold that there and get that lined up. And we're going to draw on each side of this line to give us our quarter of an inch from the center. So I'm going to draw a line on both sides. So we now have a quarter of an inch from the center on this side and a quarter of an inch from the center on that side. So now we're going to take our two pieces, our dark piece, we're going to lay our light piece on top of that and line it up point to point. Now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew on those diagonal lines. These are our sewing lines. So, that one's frozen. So, uh, why did all of them print? So now we're going to go, we're going to have that camera up in just a second. They all froze on us. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that diagonal line. Now just keeping your sewing needle going down that diagonal line towards the end. This is great for chain piecing 
also. And then we're going to flip it around. Let me turn off the light so this will be easier for you all to see what I'm doing. Put my needle down and we'll start sewing again. We're going to sew on the other side, on the other side this. So, we've got our lines sewn, so now we're going to take and cut them, this unit, in half to get two half square triangles out of it. Take a rotary cutter. We're going to line up our quarter of an inch. I'm going to lay up my ruler with the quarter of an inch seam allowance and the points to make sure I got my quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to cut it apart and I'm going to put that one to the side and you're going to open it up you normally would take this to the sewing room, or the sewing, the ironing board, and sew it, the iron it back to the dark. <clears throat> I'm going to use this, my little pressing tool, now that I finger pressed it, and push it back. And my ironing board is across the room, and I didn't feel like we should walk back and forth. <laughs> So now, we're, we got our half square triangle, now we need to trim it to size. We need to trim it to two and a half, because this is what we're do, we're using this as a two and a half inch square. So, on this, these, this ruler, you'll notice that you have a whole dot and a half dot. The whole dots are the whole increment of one inch. The half is one and a half or half inch increments. So we're gonna be using the half dot side, which is the half inch increments. Now, for a right-handed person for cutting, I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna show you how, just demonstrate you how to do that. So we're gonna take this, if I can remember how to do this. And we're gonna line it up. We have our half, two and a half right here. And you would normally take your rotor cutter, I'm gonna pretend it when I'm right handed here, and we're gonna do, we're gonna go up this side after you get this line lined up with your seam. You're gonna take it and take your rotor cutter up and go up and across to clean one side. So right handed, pe left handed people will be the opposite way. We're gonna take it, we're gonna line it up this way. <clears throat> and we're going to, try not to get in the camera and be able to see at the same time. And we're going to, Again, take this diagonal line and put it down on the seam between the dark and the white. And we're gonna make sure we're inside that dashed line. And we're gonna go ahead, which I am, and we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. This is our cleaned up side now. Now for now that we got that side cleaned up, we're gonna flip it around. We're gonna use the same pieces, the same side and the same measurements. And we're gonna line up that dashed line on our cleanup line and make sure our center line is still in the same spot. And now we'll trim the same way. And now right-handed people would do the same thing. You would t line it all up on your um, 
cleanup line and use your rotary cutter and clean it up. So now we have a two and a half inch precise half square triangle. Doesn't that look nice, nice and cleaned up, really nice. And we really did not take that much trimming off. It's really nice. <clears throat> so now that we know how to make a half um, square triangle, let's go over and I'll show you how to make a combination unit. We're gonna make one exactly like this. The combination unit starts out the same way with a half square triangle, but you're adding another triangle to the other side. We're gonna use this and we're gonna make um, a two and a half inch also. But with the making the combination units, you need to have your pieces slightly bigger when you cut them. You need to cut them a half an inch bigger. So if you refer to your chart in your instructions, let me open this up, you'll notice that a two and a half, when we cut it for a half square triangle, we need a three inch square. So for the starting of the half square triangle for the three inch, we refer back down here to this side, for the um, starting pieces for that we need to cut, we need a three and a half inch block, uh, square for the um, combination units and the quarter inch, the quarter square triangle or the hourglass. So that's how that chart reads in the instructions. Um, so make sure you refer back to this when you're making um, patterns, when you're working pa patterns. So I have three colors for the um, combination unit. So we're going to make a half square triangle again, one more time. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my magic wand and we're gonna mark our sewing lines. So we'll find our diagonal. Once again. And we're gonna draw on this side and this side our sewing lines. Again, we're gonna sandwich them together, lining everything up. And if you need to pin, please feel so to, to pin. I'm, I really, I feel comfortable just doing it the way it is, but some people need to pin things, so if you feel the need, the need to do it, to do it. And I'll, and then we'll now we just take it to the sewing, machine and sew down our sewing lines once again. Get enough string here, thread. Remember to try to stay on those lines you don't want to get off or cockeye because it'll throw off your half square triangle. And just keep sewing down those lines. Now raise my needle and flip it around. Again, this is great for chain piecing if you're gonna do it. I sew a whole bunch of these together and then I cut them apart and trim them if needed. Now you're gonna sew down this side to get your half square triangles. Okay, now I'm going to trim these strings. So, now we've got everything sewn, I'm going to take my ruler 
and we're gonna line it up on the sew line to get a quarter of an inch and make sure our points are there and cut them apart again you're gonna get two half square triangles out of one other squares I'm gonna press it open a little bit here and then use my tool to press it down this is nice for pressing your seams down so now that we have our half square triangle we do not need to trim this one because we're gonna be sewing on it again so I'm gonna put the other half to the side and we're going to lay this half square triangle on top of the last square which is our orange here or coral and we're gonna take this point and we're gonna line it to that point to these points up here and we're gonna do that with this side also now we're gonna take our magic wand by the way you can get the magic wand through studio 180 designs I think it's really handy to have it makes things go faster for marking So now I'm going to go down and mark our areas. Now if you have a dark area and you're using a pencil, make sure I keep a, a white chalk pencil on the other side to use on the other side. It makes it a lot easier to see underneath your sewing machine. So now, now we got our lines marked. You can see on the way out and outside, that's why I laid it down first and made sure it was all even. We can mark all the way out to help us sew all the way across. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. Oh, hi, Carol, and hi, um, and my mom is on. It's nice to see you guys on there. Um, yes, Carol, I love my roller also. So let's go ahead and sew these on. I'm gonna check my bobbin, it was kind of stuck earlier. Put it back in. I'm using a, um, I use a Fonz and Porter pencil, and they come in white and um, dark. I really like them. Um, I need to get more because I use them all over the place, especially in my quilting, um, my long arm room also. <clears throat> so now you're gonna take and line up your pencil lines and sew down those. And then I'm gonna raise my needle, flip it around, make sure I have enough slack, and sew on the other side. This is why I like to have the chalk pencil for seeing on the dark side because it's easier to see. It makes it a lot easier to see. And when I get to the seam, I just raise my needle, my foot, and go across. So now we have sewn our combination unit. 
So we have our combination unit. This unit will make two also. So out of two half squares, you'll make four combination units. So we'll cut these apart, lining it all up again, as we have been. And we will cut down the center as we have been with the half square triangle like we did with the half square triangles. So now we have a combination unit. We'll press this open. And I'm gonna do the other one also. So now we're going to take and trim these to two and a half inches. So moving this ruler out of the way, again, we want to use our two and a half inch line and we're going to use our center line also. So we're going to start, because remember I'm left handed and it's going to be the opposite for you for right handed people. So. And I'll do the next one, I'll try to do the next one right-handed since I'm left-handed, it's gonna be a little difficult. So we'll, we'll have a good laugh out of it. So we're gonna line these up as usual as the center goes down between the light and the dark of the half square triangle side and the diagonal line goes down the middle of our unit. And we're going to trim. Got one side all our trimmed. Now we gotta flip it around and we're gonna line up again. Making sure our diagonal is going this way and our diagonal is going this way and our finished cleaned up side is lined up on that di the dashed lines on the two and a half mark. And we're going to trim. We have now a two and a half inch combination unit. Now I'm gonna to try to do it right-handed this side for you guys who are right-handed. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my other voice is playing with me today. So we're gonna go ahead and line it up. And trim up and trim. Oops, I think it slipped. That's what gets when you have, don't, you're not used to doing that right handed away. So I'm going to go ahead and do it backwards to finish this up. Okay, we have that side cleaned up. And we'll just flip it around, and you're gonna take, <clears throat> and it's just like I said, it was the opposite from the left hand of person. And the instructions in the ruler, the ruler instructions show you how to do this precisely. I did it this time, yay. So with the combination units, you both, in both sides, you'll notice that they mirror each other. That's what you'll get when you make a combination unit. Deb Tucker does have a technical, I think she does have a technical sheet that does go over how to not do it with a um, non-mirroring way. 
Um, so if you want to look at through her website, I think there is a technical sheet that goes with this. So this is how you make a combination unit. And that's what's been used in my quilt for Amazed. <clears throat> um, so we'll put these to the side now and I'm going to show you how to make the hourglass unit or the quarter square triangle unit. This unit uses two half square triangle units together. So if you're going to make a dark and a light and you want a third color in there, you're going to want to make second half square triangle that is different colored. So for instance, we're going to do this one right here. <clears throat> so we're going to take our four colors here. We have a turquoise, an orange, and a white. <clears throat> Push these out of the way so you can see that one there. And we're going to take our two turquoise, and these are going to be our base foundations. And we're going to take our two light colors, basically, and these are going to be our tops. So we're going to mark our white and our orange color fabric here. We're going to make two half square triangles out of them. So again, this is very similar to what we've been doing. We're just building off of that half square triangle. We're going to mark our sewing lines. on both the orange and the white. And I'm gonna switch pencils because I wanna see what I'm sewing. So now we have our marked lines. We're gonna place them on top of our turquoise fabric. And we're going to start with the white and the turquoise, and we're going to sew. On those diagonal lines that we just draw. And this is a good time to show you um, chain piecing. You're just sewing them together, one after another. Now I'll take this one and we're going to sew that one up to get right after that one. Make sure you sew those on those lines again. I'm going to raise my needle cut them apart, cut that there. I'm gonna cut those apart. I like to cut them apart, it's easier for me to sew. <clears throat> and we're gonna sew on the other side. And again, I'm sewing down this side of the orange. I need a drink. So, trim all the threads away so we don't have those in our way. We're going to separate our two half square triangles.
again this is just repeating over and over again the same steps as we've done before of the the half square triangle and the combination unit and you're just adding them to together so I'm going to take this <clears throat> half square triangle unit I'm going to use my clover roller seam roller and press it open towards the dark now the white one also I'm going to do the same thing we're going to press towards the dark also so now I'm going to take the white half square triangle and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to line it up seam to seam across but before I even finish making my make sure, sure my seams line up I'm going to take my magic wand again and I'm going to mark my center of this unit but not down the center of my sewing seam. I'm going to do it across from that. We're going to sew across from that. <clears throat> so I'm going to line up my points and use my pencils and mark the light, dark and light side. So now we have a sewing line as we have been doing before. So now we're going to make sure our seams are interlocking and if you press into the center of your line you should be able to see your hourglass unit. So now I'm going to make sure this is all lined up and I'm going to sew down those lines that we just drew. Making sure your, your seams don't move. Again, if you want to pin, that's fine. Just keeps things lined up. Now I'm going to go down the other side, like we have been. Making sure our seams stay lined up and flat. We have, we can cut these apart, just like we have been with our half square triangles and combination units. I'm gonna trim the threads out of the way first. But you'll notice we have hourglass units showing up when you open those up. So we'll cut down the center so we can really open them up. And you'll make two hourglass units out of one half square triangle, well, two half square triangles, different color. So when you open this up, you have an hourglass unit. And the same on the other side. And they'll be matching. So I'm going to open these up, press them open. And then we can go down and we're going to trim these to two and a half also. So for the hourglass units, 
we're going to do for lining them up is, I'm going to lay this out like that, so we, there we go. You want to make sure your center goes down the center sewn line and your diagonal line from the two and a half inch mark area goes across that other diagonal to make it square. You're going to reverse this if you're right handed again. So you're, then you're going to trim this all off up and across and then you're going to flip it with so the the clean side is going away from the outside and we want that clean cut going to be on our dashed line for two and a half now you remember to put your center down the middle again and your diagonal for the two and a half your dashed diagonal goes across and everything should line up perfectly and you're gonna take it up and across again we now have a two and a half hourglass unit so <clears throat> I'll do this one also so we can finish that one up to make them so you can see how they look together. Yeah, that one slipped, I think. If it slips a little bit, just go back and see if you can really line it up to get it to look right. Now you're gonna take that clean line, line it down here, and line everything up and trim. So this is your hourglass unit and you can place it when you're sewing any way you want it to. You can have it flip-flop, you can have it with the oranges together, you can have it with the turquoises, the whites together, any combination works. Um, so you have, I've shown you how to make your the half square triangle, the combination unit, units, and the hourglass or quarter of an inch, the quarter square triangle units. That show you how easy those are using the tucker trimmer and you can get a precise measurement out of your, this ruler. Um, so it makes it and I really think the tucker trimmer is one of the necessary things to have in your room, sewing room but that everybody has their own opinions on that so it's up to you so let's see if there's any more questions I don't see any more so um, I have a giveaway this week and we're gonna give away a digital copy of my amazed pattern and we're gonna do how this you're gonna be able to enter is you're gonna be able to I want you to share on Facebook share this post with everybody out there and then I want you to also leave a comment below um, you can be a question. It can be a suggestion for another talk, uh, quilt talk Tuesday. Um, just put something in the comment section that's nice and don't and appropriate for everything. Um, if you have any ideas for suggestions for the uh, next week, um, please let me know. Also, if you want to, in the comment section. 
Um, now, with the winners will be drawn next week, live, during the live broadcast. Remember, to next Tuesday at 2.30, we will have a live drawing for this pattern, and they will have a couple days to let me know afterwards um, their email address and stuff, so I can email them the, pat the their PDF pattern. Next week, we will be doing, um, I'm hoping we'll have our um, Island Boutique box, but I'm not sure. If not, I think I'm going to be doing um, how, you, how to do the um, Drunkard's Path in, um, with the lock block ruler. So you might want to turn in, tune in next week, and remember, that we'll, it could be either one. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for my box. I've heard that the box is supposed to be shipped out this week, so I'm hoping. I'm crossing my fingers. So stay tuned and watch your Facebook and let, to see when, what's going to be advertised for the video, what we're going to be doing. Um, I want to thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week for another Quilt Talk Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Have a good quilting week.